Hey everyone, finally episode 4 was released. Episode 4, stomp your hooves in weight. So I will uh, continue uh, from Alyssa's uh, route. So whatever happened in episode 2-3 uh, on that route, this is the direct continuation. So let's see. So what happened? They realized that Katya went missing, so... Well, they told Anton, so... Dasha joined us at the table, gnawing anxiously on his lover lip. Toshik, you're almost living in that freaking forest. Have you seen anything strange yesterday, eh? I replied with a complete lie. Me neither. I got lucky that the homeroom teacher complained to my fox about my grades. So they didn't let me out for our rehearsal. If they did, it would be in Katya's shoes now. Basha scratched at his Adam's apple. So here's the thing, eh? Okay, something's gonna happen. I heard something. Okay. I was going to school this morning as usual, and then I heard a shrill cry cro uh, coming from behind the trees. Girl's voice. See what I mean, eh? I didn't know about Katya then. Even if I did, it would have still been scary, guys. Mornings here are as bad as nights. It's so dark you can't see a thing. What if it was Katya? And it was in the worst possible place, eh? Among the windfall near the cemetery. Yeah, BS. Well, I have a feeling that might be actually true. I swear, eh? Heard it with my own ears. Are you sure Katya really went missing? Look, even her mom, Lilia Pavlovna, didn't show up for work today. The test is off, eh? I'm telling you guys, it was Katya moaning in the taiga. The serial killer got her too. I remembered Katya. She was both beautiful and mean. The first girl in our class with a maturing body uh, to the envy of all the other girls. The main source of gossip, a snake and a bitch. Basha started counting with his fingers. Сенечка, Вова, Семён, Катя. Четыре человека, да? Сенечка, Вова, Семён, Катя. Four people, eh? Roma slammed his hands on the desk. Так, пацаны, отныне смотреть в оба. Mm-hmm. I agree with him. I mean... I'm still not sure if it's like actually something that is entirely supernatural or there's... Some uh, actual human that uh, doing the stuff. Alright guys, from now on we always keep our guard up. Don't split off from the group like in those stupid horror movies. На остальных мне плевать, но вас я в обиду не дам. I don't care about the rest, but you two are under my protection. Как и Полинку. And Полина too. I hope your relationship works out. I had already forgotten that I was ever into Полина. Yeah, right, this is uh, Alisa's uh, route, so... I mean, I think like they kinda became friends in the end. Like at least friendly terms. Like she apologized to him. Right? Was it in this one? Okay, actually I need to rewatch that later. 
The only girl occupying my thoughts after last night was Alisa. Yeah. The boys went to the cafeteria and I was left alone. Scribbling in my notebook, drawing rows of pines and two small figures flying between the treetops and the full moon. I'm still pretty sure, like, there's a good chance that uh, Alisa and Paulina is actually the same person. She was run up to my shoulders, sneaking playfully under the hem of my shirt. Even though sorting through the sky felt so simple, there was still something evil weighing me down. Was it the stolen signet ring or the heavy look those missing kids from the notice board were giving me? The culprit was definitely still in the village. They, will, they were hiding something horrible under a mask of piousness. What are you drawing? Well, actually, she asked, are you drawing? But yeah, kind of same. Embarrassed, I covered the notebook as if there was something shameful about the figures above the forest. Nothing really, just fooling around. Palina put her elbows on the desk. I had already forgotten how light and graceful she was, just like a violin. I wish she could also jump around with us, after stripping away her mask of fake mundanity. I smiled, imagining Polina's skirt flapping in the wind, the stars sparkling all around us, her asking in bewilderment whether it is all a dream, and myself telling her that it doesn't matter. Polina's expression grew dark again. Have you heard about Katya? It's a tragedy. It's also tragic that I find it difficult to empathize with her. I tried so hard, but then I remembered all her nasty deeds and... Polina shook her head. I'm a monster, aren't I? Mm. I mean, I kind of wanna figure out, but probably that will still gonna take some time. No, I thought, you are one of the most beautiful girls I've ever met, but alas, you're only number two on that list. It's actually, it's gonna be so funny it's, if it's actually the same person, right? I mean, uh, I think on... Uh, Palina's route, there was actually like a big hint that it's a good possibility, but hmm, and like just two minutes ago he was like, oh yeah, w why I was even into Palina? Minute later she reappears and he's like, oh that's why. I decided not to say that out loud. Плохо, наверное, что исчезновение анкеты расстроило меня больше, чем пропажа одноклассницы. It's not okay that I felt worse when I lost my questionnaire than when she went missing. I mean, at least she understands that. My nostrils picked up the smell of candy, tree raisin and fireworks. You lost your questionnaire? Yes, somebody out there is reading other people's secrets now. Yes, the forest, I thought. Imagine the crooked branches turning not Book, uh, pages touching the childish handwriting with their icy twigs. I hope the search goes well. Like, actually, it's both in Russian and in English, it's hard to understand is she talking about uh, the questionnaire or Katya? I was unsure whether she spoke about Katya or her notebook. I wanted to ask her about it, but then I noticed Palina's intense stare directed at me. What? You've changed. It's like you've changed. I smoothed my hair flat, surprised. I just didn't sleep well tonight. You're a different melody today, some mysterious ancient tune. I thought about the flute's melody, streaming between the Bushy treetops. I hope you haven't told anyone about our chat yesterday. Well, it, in the game it was yesterday. Uh, for me it was like over a year ago, maybe even like almost two years 
So I kinda not sure what exactly they were speaking during this route. What? Of course not. She nodded as if acknowledging that she can fully trust me. I was unsure whether I merited such trust. I think like they were talking about like uh, going uh, abroad, like different places, stuff like that. But I'm not sure if it was uh, this one. Sorry. I need to rewatch it. You want to go for a walk after school? Grandpa has... Grandpa has been feeling bad recently. I can return home a bit later. Her hair cascaded down around her shoulders. The smell was so wonderful that it sent me flying toward the glowing stars of my inner cosmos without any magic. Sure, and I'm pretty sure in this route he's kinda supposed to help, uh, you know, Romka. But let's head out through the back exit, the one near the gym. Hiding from someone? Yeah, probably he does not want uh, to be seen with you by Romka. I shifted my gaze to the desk in front of me. My buddies left us alone, giving me an ample opportunity to betray them. Guilty conscience gripped my heart in its tiny jaws. Is this because of Romka? You don't want him to know? He likes you. It's hard not to notice. But you, got, but you boys always forget the most important part. You need to ask the girl first. And the girl is saying after school near the back exit. Yeah, she made it clear. I smiled, relieved. Guilty conscience returned to devour my heart the moment Romka came back and tossed a lingonberry bun my way, winking. Eat up, you'll need a lot of energy for our little play. Oh right, he's supposed to help Romka. Oh god, it's gonna be. Yet I, the actor that was supposed to play the villain, didn't show up for that play. I left the school early, 20 minutes before the algebra class was supposed to end. I lied to the teacher about having a toothache. I hid behind the bushes near the school like some criminal. Polina soon arrived. Okay. I'm not sure if I should like look at this as another... Uh, you know, hint that Polina and Alisa is actually the same person, cause like... Last time... Well, at least in episode 3, he met Alisa here. Wait, or was it episode 2? Ah, oh, god dang it, I need to rewatch it. Hey, I'm here. If you want to hide so badly, why not dig yourself into a snow pile? I realized I was trying to play both sides here, secretly, secretly win uh, Palina over without losing Romka's support. I wonder what will happen if any of them find out about my scheme. You will be screwed. Come on, let's go. Okay. We started walking along the school's football field. The sun was bright, but it did nothing to warm the frozen soil. The twilight hit on the ticket, anxiously waiting for the moment when it could come out and devour the village. I've already forgotten the city's bustle. This place is so tranquil. Oh, and I dream of that cacophony. Kako what? <laughs> My companion burst out laughing. Cacophony is the chaotic mixture of sounds. Grandpa always taught me to look for a melody in everything. He sounds like a philosopher. He's a local historian, at least he used to be. Your grandpa sounds cool. Не то слово. Скоро я вас познакомлю. He truly is. I'll introduce you soon. Are you inviting me to come over? You don't want to? No, of course I do. 
I kept sneaking glances at Polina. She was like a precious gem, its sides gleaming, shimmering, changing ever so slightly. What? Her eyes, full of innocent laughter, asked me. Nothing, I replied without speaking. You're brave, I like that. I'm brave? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still remember how you fought back with Baburin. It was nothing. It's very important for girls to feel safe, you know? It's an honor for me to protect you. See, I told you. That expression was straight out of some novel. It's an honor, my lady. <laughs> Polina started giggling. I fake pouted but couldn't keep myself from smiling in the end. The village looked abandoned, desolate. Rickety fences, ravines full of garbage. This place probably looks nice in the summer since it's full of greenery, but during winter under the icy crust under the snowy blanket, I turned around from time to time to check if my good friends, who weren't good or friendly to me anymore, were following in my wake. Dogs barked and clanked their chains behind the fences, but they grew quiet the moment we reached the next house. I wonder if by friends he's actually talking about uh, Romka and Biasha or, uh, you know, masked kids. Try imagining that ghosts are clanging with those chains. Oh, I love ghost stories. Grandpa tells them all the time. She stopped in front of a small but cozy looking house with a snow covered roof, then put her hand on the small gate, her eyes piercing me as if trying to peek into the depths of my soul. You see, I always mention how good, caring and smart my grandpa is, but it's only half of the truth. Lately he's been acting, sort of... She paused, searching for the right words. Funny? Yeah, that's it. Okay. He became like that as he aged, so please try not to be surprised by him. Sir, yes sir, no acting surprised. <laughs> it is, soldier. We walked toward the house on the thin, clean path. Polina unlocked the door. The long, the long hallway was full of shadows. I mean, I'm still waiting for... So far, no jump scares and nothing creepy. But I'm anticipating something. Let's, let's see how, uh, how her grandpa is. The door slammed shut behind our backs, cutting us off from the roaring wind and all other outside sounds. The place became so silent that I could hear Palina's heart beating. I wanted to cover it with my hand and feel it with my palm, with my lifelines. I mean like those, I guess, right? Yeah, exactly. Do you always freeze like this? As if somebody pulled an emergency brake in your head. My imagination is running wild. Aha, uh -huh, I see. She took off her coat and hanged it on a wall hook. Come on, take uh, your stuff off. I'll go clean up the room in the meantime. Grandpa always forgets his things everywhere. I'll be quick. Is something creepy gonna happen? I mean, I don't know, somehow it still feels like I'm on Polina's route. Even though I'm like 100% sure that uh, whatever, whatever happens here is after like I hanged out with uh, Alisa. Unless I actually messed up and this is actually Polina's route. <laughs> I need to check it later, sorry. I should have been uh, preparing more for that, but I kind of did not have uh, enough time. 
so I didn't replay and rewatch, and I kind of just uh, by memory found the uh, right uh, save file and continued from them from there. She floated away light as a butterfly. Another butterfly of a still kind had a real chance of floating inside my gut in the near future. The knife, yeah. I took off my coat and tied my shoelaces. A tiny squeak reached my ears. Okay. Yeah, okay, I have this thing. The reflections in this mirror are so sharp and deep, my gaze drowns in it. It feels more like a doorway than a mirror, with an identical room with skis and sticky to the touch wallpaper behind it. And the electric meter, which barely worked during the last month, as if Palina and her grandpa spent their evening in complete darkness. Okay, and then? Huh? <laughs> yeah, okay. Expected. Phew, just a hunting trophy. Okay. <laughs> creepy, creepy. I don't get why dolls hang something like this in their homes. Crooked, sharp outgrowths. I've read that animals don't get hurt when their horns that had already hardened get trimmed. Still, it's the same as plastering your wall with clipped fingernails. They're also cornified objects that were once part of a living organism. I know this painting. Paganini. The guy was so good at playing the violin that other people had decided he sold his soul to the devil. This portrait uh, was drawn by Nikolai Fechin. He was a famous Russian painter that moved to America after the revolution and became famous there too. Wow, Paganini has such long fingers and such a piercing stare. What is he looking at? Maybe he did sell his soul after all. Would Palina sell hers, I wonder? Weird thing to ask. Okay, so one, two, three. Okay. A pair of tourist skis. Dad told me stories of how he would make his own skis and ski poles, and even his own ski wax from beeswax, rosin, and pine raisin. Okay. A good fit for the harsh winters around here, but these skis are in need of maintenance. The bindings are in very bad condition, and they have dark red spots on them. Probably just rust. Okay, this thing. Oh wait, no. Okay. Wow, there's so much junk here, just like in junk shop. Okay, this is an owl. This is a bear. And maybe there's some wolf, wolf somewhere. I, I, I can't. Okay, this is... wait, so creepy. Or like the village cemetery dump, where people throw away plastic flowers, splinters from rotten crosses and dirty stripes with gilded words of condolences. Condolences. Why did I think Polina's grandpa brought all of this from a cemetery dump? Those don't have toys or a tambourine like in those books about northern shamans. And this? What was it called again? A dream catcher, I think. It didn't catch any dreams, but it did catch a high maker spider and the stench. No wonder I can hear flies buzzing in the place even in the middle of winter. It smells like tapped lard and wet soil. I guess you just get used to it if you stay here long enough. Okay, this one is actually freaking creepy. Is there a chance that uh, for a grandpa is actually have some connections to what's going on? If one were to stand in front of the phone, the wallpaper patterns would look like a set of uh, watchful eyes. So this is the place Polina called me from. She stood right here under the electric meter among the shadows, twirling the phone cord. Maybe she even played with her with the light switch, turning the lights off at times and speaking to me in the dark. Okay, let's do it. I looked into the deeper part of the house while taking off my boots. Semi-dark mask, the corner at the end of the corridor, something moved toward me, making me dry, floorboard squeak. Squeak, squeak. Okay, that's, that's a grandpa, right? Squeak, squeak. The sound grew louder. I realized that I stepped back toward the door without oh, yeah. thinking. 
No, that's the grandpa. A wheelchair appeared from around the corner. A stocky old man protruded from the darkness. Hariton, okay. You must be my Polish classmate, right? Yeah. Anton Petrov. Yes, my name's Anton Petrov. We shook hands. His grip was surprisingly firm. Good to meet you. Very good. Okay, I'm I'm getting weird vibes. I mean, he could be... You know, he could be the one. And I'm Hriton. A name of Greek origin. It means... Charitable. And do you know the meaning of your name? I've never thought about it. It comes from Latin's Anteo, someone who goes into battle. <laughs> I chuckled in reply. Apparently my name has brave roots. And Polina? Polina is the name of French origin. If I remember correctly, it means sunlight. Of course, the sunlight. The enchanting views of France, the, Paris, the Parisian sky, all of that sounded like Polina. You know a lot about names. I gave all my dolls unique names. Dolls? Haven't Polina told you? I used to work as a puppeteer in a theater. Then one day, a night guard fell asleep while smoking there. He died and the theater burned down. All my dolls burned down. What a shame. Okay, I wonder if this is actually important. I was pretty sure that Polina told me her grandpa was a local historian. I mean, he probably could be both. He squinted. Okay, he's messing. He's messing with him, right? Yeah, actually, it's true. Uh, it's like, you know, superstition and stuff, because when a person knows your true name, he can control you and stuff like that. And have, and have you heard, Anton Petrov, that people in the ages past used to have two names, their true name and the one they shared with strangers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was believed that if a person's true name ended up in the hands of bad people, it could spell disaster for its owner. Those names could be used to hack or even kill. What? Really? Yeah, really. And the names they gave to animals were also deliberate. Okay, Zaitz comes from Zaitsi in Lithuanian, a hopper. And Volk comes from Old Slavonic Vlek, one who drags. And notice that those two animals are actually important in the story. Kariton drove closer and crossed his hands on his chest. I wondered to myself where Polina's parents were. She never spoke about her mom, only about her grandpa. I decided to ask a question to continue the conversation. And what about the bear? Oh, the bear's name is still a mystery. Our ancestors were so afraid of that beast, they decided to forget the word they used to call it with. It just disappeared from their language. Yeah, Medvedev. 
we were left with a much more recent interpretation. The one oversees the honey. Sounds interesting. The old man's smile became wider, revealing a stockade of metal implants. He raised his hand and uh, waved in the air like a rake that was scratching an empty, at empty space. Scarily, scarily, scarily. Scratch, scratch, scratch. Okay, something is gonna happen. The squeaking sound made me shrink instinctively. Here comes the bear on a fake king leg with a long birch cane. The whole village sleeps, all the peasants sleep. One old hag is awake sitting on my skin. Spinning my brown fur, feasting on my flesh. If this was what Polina warned me about, I had already broken my promise. It's not like I got surprised, more like I became seriously concerned. Uh -huh. According to legends, that morbid tale happened right in our village, just like many others. Oh, here we go. <laughs> There's also this one. The previous century was thought on simple folk. They had, cl they had close to no money and even less food, just like nowadays. Peasants resorted to robbing, of the taiga that is. A crucian here, a goose there. And the chief uh, gamekeeper, not only didn't he prevent them from doing so, but he also spearheaded the poaching efforts. He became the richest man in the village. His cellar was almost ready to burst. The gamekeeper boasted everywhere he went. This forest is mine, I'm the master here. Then he formed a family, got himself a bunch of servants and a humble estate. Okay, it's gonna be interesting. It was such a joyful occasion that he ordered a feast that uh, spanned for the whole day, up until the night. When the clock struck 12, the dog started barking outside. Go, the game master shouted to his servants, throw some bones to the dogs. Time, uh, time passed and somebody knocked on his gates. Go, he shouted to his family. Chase away the guests. Okay, Taiga took them all. He was left alone at the table. Not a single soul was coming back. Then he heard dogs howling, only to go silent again. And then, someone started banging on his door. I licked my perched lips and instinctively looked over the old man's uh, shoulder, praying in my mind that Palina would come back soon and interrupt this eerie monologue. Yet only shadows written behind Hriton's back. The game master got scared to death and ran to the cellar. He slammed the lock shut, then suddenly somebody spoke from the outside. 
милый, это я, жена твоя, отвори. Love, it's me, your wife, open up. It's not her. Жизнь не открою. No way, never. Голос стал грубее, напористее. The voice became harsher, more forceful. Изголодалась я, любимый. Дай хоть чего-то из закромов. I'm starving, love. At least give me something from our supplies. Уйди, уйди, Христом заклинаю, закричал егер и упал молиться. Be gone in the name of the Lord, the game master shouted and fell to his knees in prayer. Тогда голос как гром грянул. The next moment the voice roared. Целиком не выйдешь, хоть кусок мне отрежь. If you won't come out in one piece, at least give me a slice. себя от ужаса просидел в подвале до первых петухов. The game master spent the rest of the night inside, inside trembling from fear. А как показаться отважился, то нашел своих слуг и родных. And when he gathered enough bravery to come out, he found his family and servants повешенными на собственных кишках вдоль тракта. Holy damn, this is... Yeah, okay, this is disturbing. Hanged on their own guts along the main road. Глядь, а в имении уже дикие звери хозяйничают. Okay, our favorite uh, trio, all, bear, no wolf. In the blink of an eye, his manor became infested with wild beasts. Потому что нет у тайги границ, она частично в нашем мире, отчасти там, где ночь никогда не кончается. Yeah, I'm definitely creeped out a bit, because the taiga has no bounds. One part of it exists in our world, and the other in a place where night never ends. Егер пытался сломя голову бежать из проклятой деревни, но истинный хозяин леса настиг его в пути. The game master tried to escape the cursed village, but the true forest master got to him in the end. I spoke in a shaky voice. Что же с ним сделал этот хозяин леса? And what did the forest master do to him? The old man tilted his head and burst out laughing. It's easier to name what he didn't do. The old man's eyes pinned me to the door leaf. Come on in, Anton. The old man stayed silent for a moment. Then he smiled as if nothing ev ever happened and rolled his wheelchair back. Ступай. My, look at me, talking your ear off. Go. I brushed off my stupor and minced across the corridor. Приятно было познакомиться. It was nice meeting you. И мне, Петров Антон, и мне. You too, Антон Петров, you too. I felt relieved when I finally slipped into Polina's room. It looked just like its owner, cute and tidy. A huge collection of vinyl records and a record player immediately caught my attention. The walls were adorned by framed photographs. Дедушка тебя не сильно донимал? I hope Grandpa wasn't annoying you. Нет, он очень интересный. No, he's a very intriguing person. Небось ты теперь знаешь все о своем имени. I bet you know everything about your name by now. <laughs> by now. I first... I forced out to laugh, my eyes slid across the photos. Okay, so I can... Let's see this one. The Sailor Moon poster. This cartoon is for girls. Transformers are way better. And drawing them is much more interesting, especially when they transform, when they change shape. Although if Palina has the 2x2 channel on her TV, and she invites me to watch it together, I won't refuse. In the name of the moon, I shall punish you. Okay, I'm actually like not sure. I... I'm not sure which year this uh, channel actually got uh, 
released because I remember it from like uh, mid two thousands. So I'm not sure. Okay, next one. Piano. Kuzba's piano. Not a speck of dust on the cover. This is the place where she practices. Let's see what pieces she has in her music sheets. Hantel's Capriccio Sol Minor. Looks like the name of a pizza teenage uh, mutant uh, ninja turtles would eat. Meanwhile, I won't even be able to play a flea waltz. Okay. Two. This one, right? Yeah. A bit too old fashioned, but I like it. Let's see what Palina has in her collection. Vinyl records from Melodia and some much rarer ones from Yugaton, a company in Yugoslavia. Rachmaninov, Sviridov, Verdi's uh, arias performed by Hibla Gersmova, only classics. No Toto Cotunio, no Demis Rosos. Okay. She even has some bone music. Recordings made with an electro recorder over X ray shots. The needle. The needle slides on the picture of someone's uh, ribs. You hear uh, David Distrach playing a violin? Not sure, okay. I Examine. Are these your parents? Alina looked down. They died many years ago. I can barely remember them. Oh, I felt like a total idiot. I could have guessed Polina was an orphan. I'm so sorry. Спасибо. Thank you. Grandpa raised me as his own daughter. I'm forever grateful to him. I can imagine how tough it was. Polina flashed me a sad smile and brushed off a mischievous lock of hair off her face. Let's stop talking about sad stuff. Meet Johanna instead. Oh, I actually didn't notice a cat. Oh, I bent down to take a better look at the cat that was snuggled up beside the radiator. Hi, Johanna. Hmm. Friendly. The cat hit uh, her tail on the radiator's fins, then hissed, showing her fangs. Прости, она не особо дружелюбна. I'm sorry, she's not exactly friendly. К такой реакции я привык. I'm used to this kind of reaction. Что за имя, Джоанна? What's with that name, Джоанна? Тебе не надоело говорить про имена? Still not tired of talking about names. Джоанна из сериала Элена Ребята. Смотрел? I actually have no idea. You didn't see it. Or, oh, maybe I was too little to remember. Joanna is from Helen and the Boys. Have you seen it? I snorted. That's a show for girls. Oh, come on. I, for one, watch the Transformers too. Really now? And who's your favorite? Is this a test? Well, let's say it's Megatron. А говорила, что не любишь плохих парней. Ага, didn't you say you dislike bad guys? Да, но вот ему удалось растопить мое сердечко. I do, but he alone was able to tough my heart. Полина grabbed at her chest in a comical manner. Я знала, что Оптимус и Мегатрон были друзьями и боролись вместе против руководства Кибертрона. Ah, uh, such a... Such a geek. <laughs> Did you know that Optimus and Megatron were friends and they fought against Cybertron's uh, supremacy together? But after Optimus uh, was chosen as the new leader, Megatron went to the dark side. I'm afraid something similar might happen to you and Pitifanov. I raised my eyebrows in surprise. Well, nobody chose me as the leader. Well, let's say I did. My face had probably turned red again. Polina sat down on the couch and fixed uh, the bedspread. So, what are we gonna do? Her pose and playful gaze hypnotized me. 
uh, dimmed lights helped create a special exciting atmosphere inside the room. I felt a faint aroma of blackberry but also something more elusive and captivating. At that moment my usual embarrassment suddenly morphed into some unexplained vigor. I wanted to show off and brag to do everything in my power to keep Palina's gaze fixed on me for as long as possible. I imagined myself to be like Agent 007, ready to seduce another Femme Fatale with his stunning looks. Femme Fatale? Okay. As if mimicking the hero of spy action movies, I crossed my hands on the chest and, with a mysterious smile on my face, decided to lean against the wall. I thought myself to be quite charming in that particular moment. Yet a, clank sound <laughs> Yet a clanking sound stopped me from enjoying this graceful pose. I failed to notice an open piano and sat down right in the middle of its keys. I had lost all of my charms after almost reaching the ceiling in one scared jump. Followed by the instrument slid slamming shut with a bang. <gasps> At the same time, a frightened Joanna jumped off the chair. The cat rushed up the curtain and dashed across the wall to the safety of the wardrobe stop, ripping out thin slices of wallpaper along the way. Pieces of a turned up Sailor Moon poster that by pure chance happened to be in the way of the scared animal fell to my feet. <sighs> Judging from the look on Polina's face, she really liked that poster. Прости, я не хотел. Sorry, it was an accident. Mm. She closed her eyes, her lips twisted and forehead wrinkled. It seemed like Polina was about to scream or cry, but she just sighed and spoke in a calm and spoke in a calm voice. Не беда. It's okay. Нет такой поломки, которую нельзя починить с помощью изоленты. There is nothing that can be fixed with electric tape. No, в этом случае с помощью скотча. Well, duct tape in our case. Давай, помогай. Give me a hand here. Okay, she's actually really chill. Oh! So, this is like a game, okay. Cool. Okay, wait. Okay, this is like... Okay, yeah. So. Okay, probably like that. Like that. Okay, the last piece fell in its place and it seemed like the room's harmony was restored along with the poster. That was cool. Sailor Moon? Sailor Jupiter, this is a character from Sailor Moon, right? Sailor Jupiter, I think? No way, this is Sailor Saturn. Her name is Hotaru and she is a warrior of destruction. Yet instead of destroying the world, she ended up saving it. I've always liked her the most. I think Palina actually might uh, have something like that. Being Palina and Alisa. So yeah, oh, and she also has two different personalities in her. Can you imagine? She had, at the very least. Johanna, Johanna ripped her into at least dozen more. I glanced at Polina and inquired in a soft voice. Скажи, 
How do you usually spend your evenings? Полина shrugged and uh, looked at me as if bored. Смотрю телевизор или играю дедушке на скрипке. I watch TV or play violin for grandpa. Он планирует сделать из меня Давида Ойстраха. А, Ойстрах, окей. I actually thought that was... Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's actually more... Oh, sorry. He wants to make me into a new David Oistrach. Кого? David who? Скрипач был такой великий. He was a famous violinist. А ты что же, сама не хочешь играть? So he's forcing you to play? Почему? Хочу. Forcing me? Nothing of the sort. Это мой шанс уехать в город и начать нормальную жизнь. This is my chance to move to a big city and lead a better life. Гастролировать по странам. Знакомиться с новыми людьми. During different countries, meeting new people, I felt a sting of stupid jealousy from her words. Can you play something for me? Ты точно этого хочешь? Are you sure? Очень. Of course. Хорошо. Только учти, я сегодня не в форме. All right, but keep in mind that I'm a bit under the weather today. She procured the violin from its case. The polished frame glimmed in the lamplight. Это не обычная скрипка. This is not an ordinary violin. Ее смастерил в 17 веке скрипичных дел мастер Гварнери, а сам Ойстрах дал на ней первый концерт. Okay, this uh, this is kind of expensive. How the hell she has it? It was made by the uh, it was made in the 17th century by a violin artisan named Guarneri, and Oistra himself used it for his first concert. Is it expensive? Okay, is she probably messing with him? If not, then how? It's worth at least a couple of million dollars. My jaw dropped. Belinda replied with laughter. <laughs> yeah, of, of, co of course she's messing with him. I wish you could see your face right now. I'm joking. It's dirty cheap. If I had uh, one of Guarneri's violins, I would have lived in Moscow. I knew you were joking. Mm -hmm, sure. Polina took a proper playing pose and clutched the violin between her shoulder and jaw. Then brought the bow to the strings. Uh, okay. The bow slid across the string, saturating the air inside the room with music. I sat on the windowsill, amazed at the melody's power. Polina looked so graceful while playing. Her bow soared, it cut open space-time. Her slender fingers moved uh, with inhuman speed. A phantom smile smoldered on the girl's lips. It felt like the music that mysterious Fadias Minor was akin to a gust of wind that found its way inside the house, bringing along smells of the sea and faraway cities. And every new gust made it even more difficult to breathe for my enthralled self. The melody carried me up to the skies, bringing back memories of that night when I was jumping over the forest. But just like everything good, it ended way too fast. Polina froze for a moment, then lowered her hand and bowed. The waterfall of her fragrant hair swayed back and forth. I jumped up, clapping. Bravo! Кто это сочинил? Bravo! Who composed this? Robert Schumann. А вот кто теперь мой любимый композитор? Бра! I have a new favorite composer now, Bra. Во. The second syllable turned into an Incredulous cry when someone wailed under my foot. <laughs> Joanna. <laughs> oh, I forgot all about the cat in all my excitement and ended up stepping on her tail. She didn't give me the time to apologize. Joanna crawled up my leg and clung to my thigh. Her sharp claws pierced my skin through the pants. Polina came to my rescue by slapping the cat on the back of her head. Joanna, гадость какая, брысь! Joanna, you foul thing, shoo! Okay, she looks a bit scary like that. I mean, it seems like she actually could have like two personalities. The cat jumped on the wall rug and retreated from the room after opening the door with her paw. 
I winked when touching my thigh. It was probably quite scratched up. Polina gave me a sympathetic hug. Does it hurt? Not really, it was really my fault. I'll show her what attacking my guests entails. Ooh, I was worried less about the pain and more about the damage done to my clothes. My pants were riddled with tiny holes. Well, mom surely will be happy about this. At the same time, Polina's attention was flattering. Your Joanna is quite a strong lady. Well, like he said, she has quite a character. You'll get along. If you don't bleed out on me, of course. She turned around and searched the room with her eyes. I thought we had Aiden around here. Oh, don't worry. What do you mean? Nobody had ever died in my bedroom before. I'd prefer to keep it that way. For now, take off your pants. I imagined myself standing in front of Polina in just my underwear. I imagined her bending down to treat my wounds that fantasies called at my mind like hot steam. Please, let's not do it, Polina. She didn't listen, just soaked a piece of cotton in a brownish liquid from a small, strong-smelling bottle. <laughs> I'm ready, patient. Pull them down. Come on, I'll rinse it when I get home. My reply erased the smile from her beautiful lips. A horizontal wrinkle ran across her nose bridge. She spoke in a voice with a tinge of capriciousness. Capriciousness? Stop resisting. Let me help you. Okay. Yeah, I think she actually has two types of personality. Could be. She wrapped my leg lower than where my wound was. You can't reject girls like that. Polina took a bold step toward me and grabbed the buckle of my pants belt. I tried dodging, but to no avail. Okay, her grandpa... Sees that. The girl was already behind me. She placed her fingers under the belt and tried to pull down my pants. Oh, no you don't. She giggled. I spun around and Polina pressed her body into mine, bursting with laughter. She sank her teeth into my arm ever so slightly and tugged on the belt. I stepped back, stumbled upon the couch and ended up sprawled on its soft surface. Polina landed on top of me. Her hair covered my face and tickled my nostrils. I felt the vibrations coming from Polina's chest. She was laughing. I also felt the chilly draft uh, with the exposed skin of my tights. <laughs> she managed to pull down my pants after all. I lay underneath her partially naked, dying from embarrassment. Polina pulled away, her laughter died down. She blew a lock of hair away from her face and looked me straight in the eye. Then pressed her small fist into her cheek and measured my face with a thoughtful glance. Is there something on my face? No, but you're very handsome. That's not true. But you are, honest. And you know, I think I've been waiting for you to appear in the village for all these years. My heart was thumping in a crazy rhythm. I felt it under my ribs, in my temples, all over my body. I'm actually not sure I'm playing like on Alisa route. So far she wasn't even here, uh, I don't know. Is there even root in episode 4? I completely forgot that I was uh, lying underneath her without my pants on, rubbing my bare thigh against her leg. I really like your company. I like you too. 
I finally met someone who understands me. This is more valuable. This is more valuable than a Garneri's violin. I shifted my gaze to her lips. They were so close that I could even see the tiniest of wrinkles on the surface, just as parched as my own lips. Oh. So, it seems like it's actually Polinus root. Maybe I messed up and I just, uh, like an idiot, thought I was playing uh, something that was supposed to be Alisa. Okay. Polina lowered her eyelids. Eyelashes fluttered. Our lips touched. I felt dizzy as if I was falling into a bottomless pit. Cute, cute. Every cell in my body sang in jubilation as if I was getting a taste of the most beautiful music. Something even more perfect than Schumann's melody. Oh god, if the grandpa is there. And then I looked in the mirror mounted on the wardrobe's door. It reflected a half-open door in the corridor's gut. Ah, god. Yeah, okay, that was expected, okay, that he would see. But look at him, he's... He looks scary. Kariton was peeping at us through the crack. His green face floated in the black waters of darkness. His eyes pierced me, much deeper and angrier than feline claws. After getting his cover blown, the old man drove back away from the door and dissolved into terry shadows. I parted my lips from Polina's distraught. I had to interrupt our sweet kiss. Polina gave me a questioning look and spoke in a frustrated voice. What's wrong? I untangled myself from her, stood up uh, trying to put my uh, pants back on and fastened the belt on my third attempt. Not... Uh, okay. I mean, probably should have told like your grandpa saw us and he looked very angry. I, I, I... Yeah, probably that would be better to just say the truth. I just remembered, I promised mom to return home before dinner, bro. Don't go. Don't go, Tosha. Her voice trembled. Silvery streams ran down her cheeks. I was taken completely by surprise. Polina's mood shifted in an instant, just like topics in her grandpa's monologue. Still, her grandpa was old and weird, and she... Take me with you. What happened, Polina? Please, stop it. I leaned into her, worried. Okay. I, I get really bad why from that. Calm, calm, calm down. It's okay. I'm going mad here. I don't know. I'll off myself. Don't say that. She's, she plopped on the... She plopped on the bed. Facing her hands, sobs turned into stifled cries. I shifted my feet, puzzled with no idea how to react. Let's run away. We'll get, we'll gather our things tomorrow and go to the city. We're both just twelve. And? Do you enjoy living in a wooden uh, shack at the edge of the forest? Do you think I enjoy rotting away cooped up inside? Her back arched. Her small fists pummeled the couch. If you're a man, take me away from this place. Bro, that escalated quickly. You need to leave, my inner voice blurted out. I couldn't help but agree. Okay, that's a mistake, bro. I'm sorry, you need to rest. Let's talk later. Dude. Anton, you messed up, bro. You freaking messed up. I went into the corridor, mumbling. I might have acted like a coward, but I couldn't handle her fit of hysteria anymore. I put on my coat, shoved my uh, feet down my boots. I stared at the darkness, imagining a man-eating bear. I could hear Palina's cries coming from the other side of the wall. 
while something was squeaking its way toward me. The wheelchair stopped seven feet away on the border between light and darkness. Leaving so soon? I replied in a mumbling voice while trying while tying my shoes. Sorry, my mom will get worried. Do you know? Do you know your mother's true name, Anton Petrov? Shadows swirled behind Hariton. I craved to leave this eerie place as soon as possible. No, I'm sorry. I started apologizing left and right, anxious. Why is Polina crying? What happened? Metal teeth shined in the dark. Let's go to the kitchen. Tea is ready. I'll, I've already cut up the cake. Mom is waiting for me. It's okay. She can wait a bit longer. Come. He let out a dissatisfied sob. I finally managed to fix uh, the shoelaces, so I sprang to my feet. The old man kept a strenuous smile on his face. I turned my back on him. My fingers struggled with the lock. Scarly, scarly. Bro, he's creepy. I'll be forced to stay. Driving over by wheelchair dragged away. Scarly, scarly. Uh, too close. The door opened, letting chilly air inside the stuffy corridor. God, he's creepy. What's your true name? До свидания. Goodbye. That's a good name. Okay. I think I will add, end this part here. Anton, I think, messed up, right? <laughs> I mean, he's just 12, okay? He did not know what to do in this situation. Probably this is, like, the first time he even sees something, like, like sees a girl like that. Like, his little sister is much more smaller, much more younger, so she behaves differently. I kind of want to know what's uh, actually Polina's uh, story. Like, if her behavior is, like, actually true and there's something very dark going on. On one side, I kind of want to know. <laughs> on the other, I'm kind of afraid uh, to know. Because that could be so freaking dark and messed up in so many ways. Okay, so this is it for this part. I will... Uh, Continue soon. Hope you enjoy that. Take care and see and see you on the next time.